Many companies are complicit, but only one of them is the biggest foreign tech company in China. It is a standard practice in the industry, but that standard was set by the industry leader. Nothing would do the story justice without focusing on the most valuable US company, a global tech giant that wouldn't stand where it does today without its deep integration with the Chinese regime. An American corporation that is by far the most successful foreign tech company in China. Many US corporations have expanded their operation into China, but no other company has such a loyal cult following willing to find justification and excuses for any and all practices of their favorite brand, no matter how cruel or abhorrent. As lawmakers and the public are slowly waking up to the fact that success of the biggest US corporations is built on top of modern day slavery, Apple continues to deny, ignore, and neglect the mounting evidence exposing the secret behind the tech giant's extraordinary success. This video, like many others on my channel, is discussing topics that will make it suppressed and hidden away from the algorithm. If you think I can keep doing this without your support, you couldn't be more wrong. Out of control of the algorithm, I can't influence how many people hear this message. I try my best, but your support is necessary. Please do your part and spread this message and support the video with engagement. Apple is under fire. There is an increasing amount of evidence showing that a significant portion of its supply chain is relying on forced labor, child labor, and subjecting other workers to inhumane working conditions. One of Apple's longest and most prominent suppliers, Lens Technology, has been forcing thousands of Uyghur Muslims detained and transferred from the Xinjiang region to work in their factories. Lens Technology is only one of several companies in the Apple supply chain that have been found to use forced labor. More than a million Uyghur Muslims have been reported to be held in Chinese detention camps. For seven companies in the Apple supply chain, the Chinese government built an industrial park next to a Uyghur detention center where detainees are forced to work under threat of jail if they refuse. Apple conveniently doesn't list all the names of companies in its supply chain and denies all allegations of forced labor, but investigations of public and internal documents show a direct relationship between Apple products and Chinese suppliers using coerced workers. International backlash is piling up, including the one coming from the United States. The Department of Homeland Security and the US Customs and Border Protection both issued without release orders on products shipped from the Xinjiang region, effectively suspending imports from companies that produce cotton, clothing, and computer parts in Xinjiang. A report from the Australian Strategic Policy Institute found in publicly available documents that at least four Apple suppliers have been using forced labor transfers in their factories. The infamous Foxconn has been transferring Uyghur laborers to be forced to work in the iPhone City factory, the largest assembly plant for iPhones. It's not just electronics that Apple built off the backs of modern-day slaves. Apple is so hyper-focused on cutting their production costs that even the cotton t-shirts worn by Apple Store employees were found to be sourced from forced labor in Xinjiang. Apple's strategy is to firmly deny all allegations because doing anything about slavery would go against their business interest and could cut into their profit margins. In 2013, the company learned that one of its suppliers, Suwin, had been employing child labor to manufacture HDMI and USB ports for Apple. Under pressure from watchdog groups, Apple demanded Suwin to stop employing children, but a later audit found even more illegal underage workers in the factories. Knowing all of this, Apple wouldn't cut ties with Suwin until three years later. At the same time, Bill Crystal, another Apple supplier, was criticized by activists for safety and labor violations, exposing workers to mechanical and chemical hazards. To appease the public backlash, Apple gave Beal 90 days to improve the conditions, only to find they didn't make any major improvements. Nonetheless, Apple didn't cut ties with Beal completely because they needed them as a financial leverage over their other supplier, Lens Technology, one of Apple's most high-profile manufacturers that forces thousands of Uyghurs to work in their factories. Yet even today, Apple still denies all the reports of coerced workers at Lens. Apple doesn't have exclusive suppliers, so their labor practices also apply to other companies like Tesla, Microsoft, or Dell. However, Apple is easily the biggest American operation in China and has the most established supply chain in the country. With almost 2 million workers in China, no other US company benefits from Chinese slavery and inhumane working conditions more than Apple. And because their operation in China is so much larger than other US companies, Apple's 
production demands put too much stress on Chinese manufacturers, but they are also too lucrative for the Chinese providers to refuse them. So Apple suppliers are willing to do anything to meet Apple's sales goals, even if it means using forced labor and breaking Chinese labor laws. Apple could easily afford to stop relying on cheap slave labor and suppliers with draconian labor practices. The company holds 90% of global smartphone profits, even though it only makes up 12% of worldwide sales. Their profit margins are huge, but Apple is willing to give up none of it and would much rather continue benefiting from abusive supply chain. I implore tech reviewers to bring up ethics when reviewing Apple and other tech products. Think about how history will judge those that got excited for tech innovation while willfully ignoring the exploitation of children, slaves, and workers. Ethical criticism is absent, but it needs to be brought back and it needs to be normalized. In 2020, Apple suspended partnership with Pegatron, the second largest iPhone supplier supposedly over labor violations in the student worker program. The official narrative is that Pegatron violated Apple's supplier code of conduct because they made student workers perform work unrelated to their major and let them work night shifts and overtime. But in the meantime, Apple completely ignored a report from China Labor Watch that was released on the eve of Apple announcing the iPhone 11, accusing both Apple and Foxconn, the number one iPhone supplier, of violating not just some company code of conduct, but the Chinese labor laws. The report said that 50% of Foxconn's workforce was made up of temporary workers, while the Chinese law only allows 10%. Temporary employees are cheaper because they get lower wages and fewer benefits, which allows for better profit margins for Apple. Foxconn isn't an isolated incident either. Since 2014, half of Apple suppliers were over the quota on temporary workers, and Apple hasn't taken any major steps to prevent that from continuing. In one instance, 2018 data found that 27% of workers hired by a factory making Apple Watches were temporary. The true value of a company is not revealed in its marketing, it's in their conduct. In the fourth quarter of 2020, Apple paid $90,000 to two consulting firms to lobby in the House against the Uyghur Forced Labor Prevention Act. The bill would treat all products manufactured in Jingxiang as if they were made with forced labor and therefore be illegal under the US law. If the bill becomes the law, it could potentially force companies importing products into the United States to abandon Chinese suppliers altogether. They would also have to disclose their ties to Xinjiang to the Securities and Exchange Commission and certify their products were not made using forced labor or face prosecution for securities violations. Apple's provision in the lobbying would weaken the bill by extending the deadlines for compliance, releasing information on suppliers to congressional committees instead of the public, and shifting the burden of identifying Chinese suppliers with forced labor to the US government government. However, the bill still has a major loophole. It is restricted to the region of Xinjiang and doesn't affect products sourced from other parts of China. But many Uyghur Muslims are transferred out of Xinjiang to work in other parts of the country, which will still give Apple enough plausible deniability to say they don't use forced labor in Xinjiang. And of course, this bill wouldn't address slave labor and abhorrent working conditions in manufacturers and suppliers from other countries. In India, over a thousand workers in an iPhone plan protested against the company after they didn't receive the promised wages. Some workers' pays were cut by almost a half, while others didn't receive a monthly salary at all. After the police arrival, the protest erupted into a riot causing $7.1 million in damages. In Congolese mines, young children are still found working full-day shifts, oftentimes receiving little or no pay for their work. Congo supplies the world with cobalt, a valuable mineral used in electric vehicles, mobile devices, and computers. Tesla and Apple have been accused of benefiting from this tragic supply line, but nothing was done about it beyond the company's denials. The saddest part in all of this is that the cold followers of Apple will continue justifying and excusing Apple's neglect and abuse, and Apple will continue denying allegations and lobbying against reform. If you're not a cultist, here is something to consider. Global brands with fewer sales than Apple do not put such a heavy burden on manufacturers. It doesn't make them more ethical, but in pure numbers, Microsoft, Dell, Facebook, or Google, while still linked in some part to abusive suppliers, operate in China on a much smaller scale than Apple. Only Apple is pushing as far as it does. They all need to be shut down, but Apple needs to go first. Their impact is exponentially larger than anyone else. The only final solution to this problem is a complete global embargo on products using forced, slave, or child labor in any part during the supply chain. There shouldn't be a distinction between ethical products and mainstream products. All products should be ethical. If you're willing to accept products from companies that benefit from slavery, we've made no progress since abolishing the slave trade in the 19th century. So what is most likely going to happen next? Apple products will continue breaking record sales, cultists will continue justifying slavery, and the privacy community will continue
is simping for Apple because they made a privacy ad without doing anything substantial for privacy. I cannot ignore the fact that Apple is propping up a fascist regime and benefits from modern day slavery as the world's most viable company. This sends a horrible legacy about what kind of a society we truly are. One where few prosper on the backs of many. I'm just one person trying to spread the message. I've never taken any sponsorship because I want to remain independent and speak my mind freely on any issue. YouTube, however, seems to have put a cap on how many views I can get, even though engagement from you guys have been incredible. We need to fight back together. Without your support, this wouldn't be possible. If you like the fact that my channel has never received any sponsorship, consider donating to my crypto wallets or via Patreon. Thank you for your support.